being open to see the, the truth of your word, to see what you have already provided you. for us. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, Father, that you provided victory for us. We live in victory. We live the healed life. We live the prosperous. We, we live a prosperous life, and yes. we live a peaceful life. Yes. And we thank give you all the praise. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Father God, as we study your word, we thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic spirit. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we decrease and you increase. All of you and none of us. Lord, so our ears to hear, our hearts yes. to see, and our spirits to contain yes. your word. And Father God, we'll be ever so mindful yes. to always give you oh. praise and always give you glory. Oh. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone in agreement, say amen. 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 Praise Jesus. We're teaching from a series that we have called Living a Victorious Life. Mm -hmm. And the first teaching in this is we are victors and not victims, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the first teaching in that mini series of we are victors and not victims is that we taught on through faith in Christ we are overcomers. I'm doing a little review here. Mm -hmm. We said that a victor is defined as one that has over, I mean a victim is one is, uh, defined as one who is sacrificed or destroyed under any various conditions. Amen. And we said a victor is defined as one who has overcome or defeated an adversary. A victor is a conqueror. All right. And we said that through faith in Christ, we are overcomers. All right, and we read 1 John chapter 5, Amen. verse 4 and 5. And 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Amen. Verse 5 says, Who has overcome the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Right? Amen. We define that word overcome in those verses from the Greek as meaning to conquer and to have victory. And it's not the kind of victory that you just barely win. Mm -hmm. It literally means to have superiority that leads to overwhelming success. Amen. We don't just Amen. barely win. We don't just barely win. We overwhelm the situation. <laughs> overwhelming success refers to overpowering success. Yeah. The kind of success that is achieved with superior force. Yeah. All right? Superior force is the kind of force or power that renders the opposition useless. That's what we do. In a situation that comes our way, we render that situation useless through faith in Christ. Amen. 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 We said that the word world in those verses where it says, uh, he that overcome, he that believeth in the Son of God overcomes the world. That word world used there. It's not necessarily referring to the material or physical world, but it's talking about a demonic system that Satan has in place. Mm -hmm. Now, Satan's system influences the demonic world. Right. Okay, because right. he influences people. Right. I mean, influences the natural world. Right. Satan's right. system the influences world. the natural world. But here, in, 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 in that verse, it's really referring to a system that Satan has in place to entrap people. Right. And, and, and to destroy their lives. Amen. All right? But through faith in Christ, we have power to overcome that demonic system. Amen. All right. Then we said, we started teaching last week on we are more than conquerors. Yes. All right? Now, we started in uh, Romans chapter 8, and I want to go back there. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. We're going to pick it up there. Romans 8, 31. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a review here right quick so we can get caught up. <coughs> Romans 8, 31. And Paul... <laughs> Romans, <laughs> Romans 8, 31. Paul said, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Right. Last week we said that that's best that that if God is for us, who can be against us is best translated since God is for us. Since God has done everything from a foreknowledge, we know that He is for us. We don't have to ask the question: Is God for us? All right. Now I want to mention something that I didn't mention last week: is that because God is for us, we don't have an excuse no more 
of why we can't succeed for God. We can't play the race card anymore. Nope. We can't say because of our ethnic background that we're being held back. We can't play the educational card no more. We can't say because I'm, I'm not smart enough, I don't have enough education, I can't be successful. You can't play the card of not having enough money because right. God doesn't care about your money. Right. He cares about your ability, your availability. Right. Okay, so you can't, we don't have an excuse anymore or why we're not succeeding. The only excuse we have is that we choose not to do it. And it's not an excuse, it's a decision That's right. that we make. That's okay? Right. So we can't blame anyone else for our failures but ourselves. So if God is for you, it doesn't matter what color you are, no matter what where you live, it don't matter what kind of money you got or what you don't have. If God is for you, no one can be against you. Amen. Amen. So we don't have no excuse anymore. Amen. All right? Now, we also said last week that Paul answered his question, if God be for us, who can be against us, in verse 32, with a question. And in verse 32, he says, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. And, what, and what we said was that if God didn't hold his son back, if he didn't keep Jesus from right. being sacrificed for us, then there's nothing that he would keep from us. Because right. anything that he withheld from us that we need, mm -hmm. if he withheld it from us, then he would be putting more value on that what he withheld than he would on his son. Right. And we know that's not true because he loved his son. Right. Him and his son is one. Right. So right. there's nothing that God will not provide us. Uh, we can literally say God has already provided for us to live right. victorious. Amen? Amen. All right. Then we went on and said that uh, sometimes we allow the opinions and and, uh, and, and, and of people or what they say to make us feel like victims, yeah. to to make us have a to to cause us to take up a victim's mentality. Okay, mm -hmm. but I'm here to tell you. We said last week that God is the judge. He's the supreme yes, judge. Yeah, right. Don't nobody dictate who you are. Don't nobody dictate the results of your life. Right. But God. Amen. Right. Amen. We said. Uh, let me look at my notes. Here. We said that God is the one who determines who we are and what we are not. We said God is the supreme judge who has justified us. Therefore, no one has the right to determine our valuableness. God is the one that judges us. So don't let the opinions of others cause you to feel like a victim. Right. I want to read you something. I didn't read it last week, but I'll read it this morning. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 3 and 4, Paul said that nobody judged him but the Lord. He, he didn't even, he said, I don't even judge myself. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, Paul said, But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. That's verse right. 4, he says, For I know of nothing against myself. That's wow! Right. Yeah. That's wow. awesome. Paul said, I know of nothing against myself. Now remember, this is the one that used to crucify That's right. Christians. That's right. But when he when he became a new create creature, everything that he did before that was passed away. Everything Praise that you did God. before you got saved, God don't remember no more. You are a new person. Those old things that you did, they're gone. They're, they're not held against you. They're, they're totally wiped away. That's why Paul could say, I, I can find nothing not against saved. myself. Uh -huh. All right? He says, yet I am not justified by this. That's right. But he who judges me is who? The Lord. The Lord. Is the Lord. He said the Lord is the one. God, now, now, let me explain something. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I think it's around verse 30 somewhere, he says that if we judge ourselves, then God will not judge us. Right. Right. Now, there's a certain point where we do judge ourselves, we judge our behavior. Right. But right. we don't judge the results. Right, right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We don't that's determine right. where a person goes. That's not our call. Right. That's right. But we do, as Christians, if, if I see you doing something that's not in line with the Word right. of God, I can come to you oh, yeah. and show you from the Word of God how a Christian is supposed to live. Yep. Right. Now, I'm not judging you. Yep. I'm showing you yes, from you the are. Word of God yes, 
Uh, how are you supposed to live? Right, if you right. say you if you say you're an orange tree, then I need to see oranges on your lips. Yep. Right. I don't yep. need to see no lemons. Yes. If I see lemons, then you're doing something wrong. That's right. That's right. Okay, so right. there's a point where we can do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But as far as judging people, telling them what's where they're going and and and, and the result of their, their their situation, that's God's job. That God. sure is. He's the supreme judge yes, of that. Okay. Our job is to correct you when you when you're not doing yes. the right thing. Yes. Okay? Are y'all all right with that? Amen. All right. all right. Then we said that there's no situation that arises that should separate us from the love of God. That's right. Amen. And in uh, verse 35, Paul said, who shall separate us? Now, I find this interesting because he says, he started off by saying, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Now, he starts out by saying, who, but then he started naming situation. You know why? Because the who behind the situation is the devil. That's right. right. That's right. That's your, I mean, he's the, he's the ultimate yes, he problem that we yes, have. All right? right? Even with our choices that we make, or we can make some bad choices, oh, yeah. the influence behind those bad choices is the end yeah. So he's the, so, 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 so what Paul is saying, he can't separate you from the love of God. No matter what he throws at you, no matter what situation yeah, arises right. in your life, he can't separate you from the love of God. That's right. The only thing that can separate you from the love of God is you not knowing about the love of God. You have a lack of knowledge of the love of God. Because a lot of times we think that when we mess up, when we do something wrong, God has stopped loving us. Mm -hmm. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. So when problems come up, problems shouldn't push us away from God. Problems should cause us to go draw closer Right. Yes. When you start getting, when you mess up, don't stay away from church. Come to church. Right. If you have to come to church with holy shoes, with, shoes, on. with holes in your shoes and and holes in your clothes, come to church. Come to God. Come to people of God where you can get your help from. Don't let Amen. the devil push you away. Go if you got right. holes in your life, don't let the devil push you away. That's right. Because I'm going to tell you something. A lot of us still got holes in our yeah, life. Yeah. But the good yeah. thing about it is God doesn't see the holes. Right. He yeah. sees the complete work. The work is right. 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 being yeah. holes, not yeah. having holes in our life. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank Amen. you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. So this is where we left off last week. And we're going to pick it up here. 